uh, data mining, um, knowledge discovery, uh, machine learning, algorithms, uh, methods, examples, all these are different uh, uh, terms, uh, or this is a word cloud where you can uh, just relate to machine learning, like data mining, knowledge discovery, statistical learning, pattern recognition, computational learning, and predictive analytics. So these are in, uh, in, in a way related to machine learning terms. So just now, basically, machine learning, by example, some of you might have already uh, know what machine learning is can, can do for us. But one particular example uh, of machine learning is classification. We, just all of us here in this training use emails. If it wasn't through email, we wouldn't have communicated. Uh, so when we use email, a spam filter is one of the capabilities that most email service providers uh, provide to us. And in those spam filters, nobody is sitting there and just uh, checking whether or not an email that's sent to you uh, is either just a, a legitimate email or a spam uh, email. So computer gets trained on uh, historical data on such uh, 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 inputs as email subject, email body, the length of the message, the sender email domain, uh, and the number of recipients. Based on this criteria, machine learning, just a machine can be trained to have a model, a machine learning model that we call a spam filter. Now, here, what you see at the center is a model that we call a spam filter, just uh, checking each of the emails and then classifying them as either um, uh, non-spam or spam. So this is just one particular example of machine learning, which is classification. As you can see, the input is here, uh, the email subject, email body, the links, the sender email domain, and the number of recipients. This, we, we could have like uh, thousands of records about uh, such uh, details, uh, thousands of uh, 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 email metadata, have just having these uh, uh, values. And then using this data, we train a computer, use a, a classification algorithm, and generate an output that generated uh, output will be a classification model and when we use the classification model on emails we would get a spam versus not spam uh, output then just we, we take the next action so the program will take the next action uh, uh, that you would that you would need uh, to be done on the particular object next so Another classification uh, is from data to discrete classes. Uh, as you can see here, this is a weather uh, prediction. In a weather prediction, usually you would get number, right? Numbers. Those numbers would be whether or not uh, the temperature is higher, uh, whether or not uh, the uh, like there is a certain uh, drop of uh, rain, uh, whether or not there is rain. Uh, or depending upon different climatic uh, uh, metrics, you can generate numbers. And combining those uh, numbers, you will say, oh, okay, today uh, or on this day, it's going to, it's going to uh, sunny, or it's going to be cloudy, or it's going to be uh, uh, rainy. And you can even associate a certain number, the numbers that you predicted for this uh, specific uh, scenarios, or there could be like uh, uh, snows, or depending upon the number. But the input would be the quantitative data about the current state of the atmosphere, or the land, and ocean, and using meteorology to uh, uh, project how the atmosphere will change at a given uh, place. Is there a question? Zacharias? example is a regression uh, model for predicting a numerical value and such model can be used uh, for on in stock market and the input would be historical uh, price movements uh, market signals uh, mergers acquisitions financial earning reports and etc this is the most common uh, data sold uh, in the stock market is, is there is there any uh, we we capture different types of market signals 
right? How much is being sold? How much is being, uh, how much is uh, like uh, uh, the, uh, the, the sale, right? Um, another example is clustering which is uh, grouping similar uh, things together. And just this is one of the algorithms, uh, the unsupervised uh, algorithms that group uh, uh, similar objects uh, together. So you, you can see like the colors are gr the groupings, right? You have these colors that uh, uh, distinguish between different uh, groups. And let's say just the input data is life expect expectancy at birth and the growth uh, income, mortality under five years, and expected use of the schooling, etc. Using this input data, we could create a cluster uh, of three groups, and these three groups can be seen uh, as developed, developing, uh, uh, underdeveloped. So these are like uh, how we could classify countries based on the details that we see here, uh, and just uh, and say so. These are uh, countries which can be grouped together. We don't, uh, we, we simply, we use data, we use data, uh, and then based on that data, we group uh, countries, uh, uh, we create a clustering um, uh, model that groups uh, countries. And Another is embedding and dimensionality uh, uh, reduction. Sometimes the data that we see may be very difficult to see, uh, to uh, understand, to grasp uh, by uh, uh, by simply looking at it. Especially when it when it becomes um, multi-dimensional, more than a three-dimensional uh, data set. When it when that is the case, uh, then we may convert um, uh, the data to a lower dimension, such as converting words into vectors or converting images to vectors so that we can see the dimension uh, 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 in a reduced dimension. Words, thousands of words could be converted to vectors. And how, like just images with multiple colors could be converted to vectors uh, um, or multiple channels could be converted to vectors. Uh, and the input uh, could be uh, a high dimensional data. Uh, in document or image or video, etc. Then, when once it is reduced, the output would be simple data with few attributes without losing the original context of it. So uh, here we have like words converted to vectors. Here we have image converted to vectors. In any case, for visualizing the data, uh, we convert the, a high dimensional data into a low dimensional data, most of the time that's just in a two dimension or a three dimension. And we will see uh, some some uh, examples in this area. And the other, there are different applications uh, of machine learning um, in science, uh, environment, uh, retail, for uh, in manufacturing, in security, marketing, management, finance, and uh, web. Uh, just to mention, for example, uh, in relation to application, uh, to our country, uh, Ethiopia, we could use uh, we could use machine learning uh, models trained for intelligent uh, uh, fraud detection for in our financial uh, uh, institutions. And most recently, we have seen people tampering with uh, financial transactions of uh, individuals. Uh, and then especially like just employees. And we we could create models that track similar kind of activities um, uh, and identify uh, who is doing what uh, and in what kind of pattern. And the fraud detection is an important uh, uh, approach to protect the financial well-being of uh, industries, companies, and also individuals. Because uh, to, to gain trust, from you, from customers, financial institutions should build such capabilities of protecting the uh, people. So that's one particular example. And just you can, we can apply uh, security-related machine learning models. And in this case, uh, fraud dete detection uh, or anomaly detection is one of the popular applications in multi, uh, in different uh, scenarios. And in case of marketing. Uh, for example, clustering is another uh, uh, good example here. 
for promotion. You can group different customers into uh, different types of uh, just yeah, a, a company's customers can be grouped into different uh, 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 different clusters uh, or can be grouped into uh, uh, identified clusters so that one you can provide a specified service for uh, uh, those groups similar uh, customers uh, or do a discount for those customers that are not frequently coming in uh, uh, buying items from uh, you. Credit scoring uh, and risk analysis uh, are also again uh, other approach, other applications of uh, machine learning. Uh, enabling in health care, uh, machine learning application is important. Before uh, the worst thing happens to a patient, you can have uh, a model to predict about just uh, based on different uh, 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 information uh, on the uh, uh, on the patient, then just um, a machine learning model can predict going to happen, uh, you know, but the model has to be trained on a similar scenario across multiple, uh, uh, using data from multiple patients over uh, the years. Now, the overview of machine learning, this is that is one of the cheat, the cheat sheets of uh, machine learning and dividing a machine learning. So we will uh, we will see a different uh, dive of each uh, of the machine learning approaches. So, uh, today, we I mean um, machine learning. Uh, there are three types of machine learning. One is uh, supervised, the other is supervised, and the other uh, the third one is reinforcement uh, learning. And each of these models have got their own application. For example. Uh, in unsupervised learning, we, may, we, we say that there is a dimensionality reduction, which means reducing the dimension of data to a lower uh, dimension without losing the context. This application, um, uh, this kind of model can be applied on big data visualization, on meaningful comparison and structure discovery and feature uh, elicitation or feature uh, extraction. Um, the other unsupervised uh, learning approach is clustering. And clustering can be applied for recommender systems, uh, such as uh, like when you when when you search on uh, uh, a shopping site, you will see oh you can buy this, and then also people who bought these also bought uh, these other items. So this kind of recommendations uh, improve uh, sales for a particular uh, site. So this is a recommendation. Or you may be searching for books. Uh, and you, you may not have uh, uh, enough insight about just the type of book that you're searching for. If you don't know the specific item that you want to buy, uh, recommender systems will tell you, oh, uh, you're looking for this book. But people who search for this book also bought this book. So this is the kind of recommendation uh, that you can uh, have. So models that are trained for recommender uh, recommendations are used in recommender systems. In targeted marketing, uh, which we mentioned earlier, clustering. And customer segmentation, also uh, segmenting customer either for uh, 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 providing some um, discounts uh, or sending an email uh, to, to encourage them uh, buying what they they used to buy so depending upon your your target you can segment customers uh, for different purposes so clustering is has got these different uh, applications and you can you, you see the other uh, uh, applications in case of classification identifying uh, fraud uh, image classification or customer retention so these are the way that you would classify uh, your customers uh, uh, that you would uh, use classification models for diagnostics. And in case of supervised uh, learning, uh, uh, just other types of, the other supervised learning is regression. Regression is mostly used for forecasting uh, and for prediction, depending upon the type of environment, the type of uh, domain that you're uh, planning to use the technology, you can utilize um, uh, any of these uh, machine learning models. In any case, to, to summarize this slide, we have three types of machine learning uh, approach, the unsupervised learning, the supervised learning, and the reinforcement learning. But 
what are what is unsupervised learning what is supervised learning and what is reinforcement learning we will learn more about that in detail in subsequent uh, weeks and the different types of algorithms that we saw we will see how we can build how we can create machine learning models uh, that would do uh, most of the things that you, we said uh, machine learning, whether unsupervised or supervised machine learning, would do uh, for for us. Uh, the objective of machine learning is, you know, using the cheapest and abundant data and generating the most expensive uh, resource, which is knowledge. So that's what that's what the ultimate objective. Uh, this is uh, uh, the pyramid uh, of uh, wisdom. So the ultimate objective of machine learning uh, is ensuring uh, that um, data can be, although cheap, can be uh, used to extract uh, um, insights, useful insights, uh, uh, and finally just enable uh, or add additional uh, uh, organize uh, add additional um, uh, intelligence to applications and services that we use in uh, one or more uh, scenarios so so this is the ultimate uh, objective so um, when is machine learning used that's it. Uh, so this this is a question that we would uh, need to answer. Machine learning uh, is not going to be always used. There are scenarios where machine learning can be used, and there are scenarios machine learning cannot be used. Uh, the the among the scenarios where machine learning can be used are si si situations where human expertise doesn't exist. For example, uh, you cannot send uh, people to navigate Mars, so you would have to use uh, uh, robots to, uh, nav uh, to do navigation on maps. So you will need this kind of intelligence. So that, so that intelligence can be trained using uh, data uh, and you can create artificial intelligence uh, uh, based robots uh, and the underlying model uh, is a machine learning model that drives the uh, mechanics of the robots. And humans, when humans are unable to explain their uh, expertise, for example, in speech recognition and in uh, vision, uh, it's very difficult to, because this, this is the most complex uh, area. And then just uh, in that case, you would use uh, uh, machine learning models. And for example, solutions, if solutions needs to be, uh, need to be uh, uh, adapted or customized to particular cases uh, for biometrics, for personalities, personalized recommendation. I just I mentioned this uh, during our last, uh, uh, I mean, my, my in first class, which I'm repeating again. Personalized recommendations, you can say you can recommend the people, uh, even your friends, but if you have so many uh, uh, thousands of people coming into your show, which is impossible, so when I say shop, not a physical shop, but just a website, like just a, uh, an online shop, it's very difficult to provide recommendation for everyone. Uh, uh, just uh, humanly difficult, humanly impossible. So what you should be doing is training models uh, and watching what these people are trying to uh, window uh, uh, shop. And then based on their window shopping, you encourage or you, you provide them recommendation. So the people's ability, you can you cannot utilize people, but you can you you can utilize uh, machine learning models to uh, provide personalized recommendations. And models are uh, based on huge amounts of uh, uh, data. And uh, in case of ge genomics, it's because of machine learning that uh, uh, the he heads uh, in the uh, heads care. Uh, or uh, in um, the field of medicine, you can you like most of the things are getting just uh, revealed now. Get, just there are so many breakthroughs in the most recent years because of the advent of computer science, computer 
uh, and also just the advent of uh, machine learning. So these are where machine learning can be uh, used. But where is when is machine learning is not needed? Right? You know, we have to we have to stop trying to fit to try to create models for everything because when simpler alternatives are already uh, exist uh, that are equally effective you you shouldn't have to because because you wanted to use you shouldn't you shouldn't use a machine learning model right uh, because you can create uh, a machine learning uh, model you shouldn't create you have to uh, see in whether or not there is an alternative uh, solution. Or a simpler and alternative solution because machine learning model, uh, creating a machine learning model has got its own cost. Maintaining the machine, the model has got cost, but if you have a simpler alter alternative that you can use, avoid the use of uh, machine learning model. And when the relationship between all system uh, variables uh, uh, is completely understood, so uh, usually machine learning model is very effective when uh, things are complex, especially when you are not able to explain for example uh, vision um, uh, speech recognition right uh, or classification of uh, image uh, when you have to do like thousands of uh, uh, attributes to, to, un to be understood and then just make a, a classifying a particular uh, image with those many attributes to a certain type so when that's the case, you use machine learning model. But when you have everything well understood, simple, then just you shouldn't use a machine learning model. Uh, uh, the other one is if interpretability of results is not possible. Most of the time, like just a supervised machine learning uh, approach suffer from each uh, explainability and interpretability. So uh, we shouldn't always have to just uh, utilize machine learning models um, if we cannot properly interpret how we created the models how we could have how we could use uh, the models and if there is a high error susceptibility or if the model is a very poor performing model there is no um, uh, reason of using a machine learning model in that scenario if you have a very limited uh, training data uh, and the the bias the variance uh, of the model and uh, uh, is so worse with the model is overfitting or learning more about the uh, training data not about uh, 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 properly uh, predicting on trade on testing data that's a very good indication that you shouldn't you shouldn't be using a model or you have to rethink about just what you're doing So machine learning uh, is incredibly powerful and can have significant or unintended negative consequences on society through targeting, excluding, and misusing. When this is a scenario, stop using machine learning. Stop using machine learning. Uh, mainly like the last point uh, uh, has been an important issue uh, and there are uh, uh, even laws that are being being um, uh, discussed to create uh, responsible uh, AI or re responsible ML, responsible machine learning or responsible artificial uh, intelligence. Responsible AI is an area which is being uh, uh, well studied, well well researched because there are situations where people were uh, uh, being excluded uh, or uh, people were being targeted. A very simple uh, example, uh, at times uh, when your accent uh, is like mine, uh, the model doesn't understand what I'm talking about. And then when the text gets generated, the text may uh, just, uh, from my speech, when a text gets generated, the generated, uh, the, the generated text may send a wrong message to the fluent speakers of uh, English uh, or uh, uh, if we train a model uh, for Amharic or Afanoromo or any other uh, language in Ethiopia uh, and some non-native speaker is using that model uh, and then just we are generating a uh, postponing text, we may 
end up generating um, a message that would be uh, inappropriate to the culture, to the people, uh, or to the fluent speakers uh, of that particular language. And if that's the case, you shouldn't have to do uh, or enable the model to do to do that. Uh, if that's uh, uh, if, uh, uh, if you create a negative um, uh, or if it has a negative consequence uh, on a particular society or community, right? So uh, one particular example is, uh, you know, uh, uh, no, I'm not understanding kind of uh, uh, people of different races, right? People of different color, uh, uh, and um, not only not, not only uh, in, in different in different scenarios, uh, and people uh, economically. Um, uh, 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 like people with uh, with uh, low economic standing, right? So these kind of scenarios could happen. And if that's the case, if you realize that that's going to be the the, the situation, you should be uh, uh, you should avoid uh, or watch your machine learning model. Now, this is the uh, most common uh, process or framework that that has been underused. Uh, for the last 20 years, even more than that. Uh, and it's called a cross uh, industry standard process for data mining. And uh, this is uh, the most commonly used uh, uh, process or framework for machine learning practices. Uh, and the, the first thing, before trying to create a model uh, or searching for data, is understanding what business are you trying to um, uh, use that model in. What kind of problem you have? Understanding the problem, understanding the business um, uh, is the first thing that you should be doing. And next, you try to uh, identify whether or not uh, you have the right data uh, and for uh, whatever machine learning process or data science process that you are after. And in this case, uh, once you, uh, you you identify the data sources, you have to understand uh, the, the data and also prepare the data. And then you, uh, you, you choose one or more algorithms uh, and then using the data, you can train uh, uh, a model or multiple versions of a model. And you evaluate. So this is an iterative process. During your, your evaluation, your model may suck, may not, may not do what you wanted it to do. Or you may have difficulty of answering the uh, the problem, the business problem that you identify during your business understanding. And if that's the case, you have to uh, refine the business problem and also just identify the right data uh, source and understand the data. So this is a kind of iterative process. Between evaluation uh, and the business understanding, you may have this. And even when you try to understand the data that you will be using for training a, a model, uh, you may not understand or you may not get the right data to answer the, the right uh, business problem. So this is, this is uh, a required iteration. And one thing from my personal experience at Microsoft, people assume that here, uh, people assume that we have like like data scientists can understand each and everything. That's not that's not the uh, uh, true. Uh, and and then the other the other uh, th thinking is you know uh, every software engineering process is identical, right? So that is something that you should be uh, be very careful trying to fit uh, a totally different process. Uh, into a process that you already know. Machine learning, mo the, uh, machine learning uh, uh, process in, in practice is completely different and has got uh, this kind of um, framework that you need to apply. Asking more questions is not a sign of uh, uh, weakness. Asking more questions is not uh, a sign of not understanding, but just a sign of willingness to understand or to properly uh, understand the problem and doing things in, in an iterative way, especially, for example, between uh, preparing data and training a model is a way of refining your uh, trained model to 
make the model uh, a well-performing model so that it addresses the business problem that you uh, define at the beginning. And once you identify the model that you are satisfied with, and then just you evaluate according to the metrics that you created during the business uh, understanding. And once you are satisfied with the evaluation process uh, and then the, the, the machine learning model addresses uh, uh, or answers the business problem with the expected performance metrics defined during business understanding, then just you go uh, and deploy the model. So this is how it goes, how it goes. Uh, although there is no line between deployment and business understanding, I, I noticed a glitch. Although there is, there is no uh, line between uh, deployment and business understanding, at times you may, you may have to start a new process. Uh, but after deploying your model, you would have to also refine uh, the process because uh, a deployed model, a deployed model might need uh, to be refined. A model that was trained uh, and deployed six months, uh, six months ago may not perform well after six months or after a year. So just this process can be uh, repeated uh, all over uh, again, either for a new, uh, uh, for training a new model or for re retraining an existing model because uh, the, there is a concept called the data drift. The data changes, the behavior of the data changes and the model that was trained using a similar data in the past have to be trained again to understand the current state of data. Now, the process is preparing data uh, and training the model and the evaluation. So in data preparation, you have handling, uh, uh, miss, uh, missing data, handling outliers, handling uh, imbalances and scaling, feature engineering, selecting features. All these steps, we will be using a practical data point, practical data points to uh, train, uh, I mean, to uh, practically see how we do things. Now, today's uh, session is pure, uh, more of uh, a, uh, an introductory session of everything that we will be covering practically in the subsequent, subsequent weeks. And a model training, uh, uh, involves choosing the, the right algorithm. You may be uh, choosing a classification algorithm uh, among which are the Kenyra's neighbors, the, the naive bias, decision tree, random forest. So the, among the different algorithms, you choose one for the classification, depending upon the type of uh, problem that you're dealing with. Or if you may be interested to create a regression model. And for regression, we have linear regression, uh, uh, logistic regression, uh, support vector regression in all kinds of different uh, regression uh, uh, approaches and uh, uh, algorithms. And we may be interested in uh, unsupervised machine learning, which is clustering. We may use uh, KMIS, KMIS++, uh, or hierarchical clustering, uh, or spec uh, uh, spectral uh, clustering. And on another uh, unsupervised model uh, algorithms, uh, we may be interested to dimensionality reduction, uh, the PCA, principal component analysis, uh, and the T distributed uh, stochastic neighbor uh, embedding. Each of these, we will see at least one example from each of these uh, algorithms. And during model, uh, uh, model training, we have, uh, uh, we can choose algorithms depending upon the type of uh, problem that we want to uh, solve. And then we evaluate the model. We evaluate the model. Uh, just when evaluating the model, uh, we could use different types of metrics. Uh, for classification, we could use uh, accuracy, precision, recall, or for regression, uh, we could use a root mean square error or mean absolute error. Or for clustering, we could use CLOT uh, score and different types of uh, uh, metrics are there for each of the different uh, models that uh, we trained during the model training process to be evaluated depending upon uh, the business problem that we are after to uh, solve. And 
And another thing uh, we have here uh, is the Microsoft uh, uh, Team Data Science process. So uh, a couple of slides ago, this was our uh, framework. This framework has been there, as I said earlier, uh, for more than two decades. But Microsoft built uh, its own framework for software development uh, focused industry. Uh, so machine learning, artificial, uh, the artificial intelligence data, science, da data mining uh, can be uh, done using this uh, CRISP DM process. The CRISP DM process doesn't distinguish who does what, especially like just there are different disciplines. In the software industry, different people are um, uh, have expertise in different areas, expertise in different areas. Uh, for, for example, for data understanding, you may not need a data science uh, uh, knowledge, right? For preparing data, you may not need a data science knowledge. But when it comes to model training, you would need to train to understand the different al the characteristics of algorithm, or you may you may be required to write your own new algorithm, right? Uh, so that would require data science in machine learning and artificial intelligence knowledge, and even for evaluation. As, as a result of that, what Microsoft did is it's this uh, segregated people as uh, uh, experts. For example, we have you have solution uh, uh, architects, project managers, data engineers, data scientists, application developers, and project leads. So after identifying these different disciplines, uh, the process, as you can see here in uh, this table, uh, is I don't know how uh, how I can. I'm sorry. So, so at different stages of the, the, the development process, uh, we have different different uh, requirements. Uh, if every individual has got a role uh, in different fields, uh, in business understanding or uh, data acquisition and uh, understanding or modeling or deployment, at different states, different people have got their own uh, role and just this is nothing but matching uh, or uh, matching individuals in a task-based life cycle uh, uh, aligned with other processes. Now, the course resources, we have uh, course resources, and then just I, I will explain what's going to happen in the subsequent uh, uh, weeks. So let me know uh, if there is any uh, question here. I suggest instead of uh, unmuting yourself, write down, uh, I will watch for the next uh, 10 minutes on uh, the chat and I will answer your questions. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thanks so much, Cherry, uh, for organizing the two questions for me right right here. And what is your opinion on the use of machine learning in the stock market? Do you think it has been successful given the recent drop in the uh, value of PTC uh, and Luna? Can we conclude that the predictions made by machine learning were uh, accurate? Um, What what does BTC mean? BTC, can you can you write down? I don't want to assume that uh, I, I understood. I don't want to. Oh, Bitcoin. Okay. Bitcoin. <laughs> Wait. So um, I can answer this. Um, uh, uh, the second question from Kubra, when training the machine learning uh, model, both training and testing accuracy is increasing, but there is a high gap between uh, train and test accuracy. That is, 
train training accuracy is much higher than testing accuracy how to report the final reason uh i mean cutting point uh, for the final reason yes okay i will uh, i will explain uh, this too. the first thing uh, is what's my opinion on the use of machine learning uh, in the stock market is currently being used uh, so i it doesn't need our opinion just the market is driven by using machine learning models but models by themselves don't provide the full picture of what's happening because most of the time markets uh, especially the stock market it is driven by people's action people's action uh, uh, people maybe uh, the, the model may have uh, just one of one of the input one of the uh, the values that um, models uh, watch in the stock market are the volume of trading uh, trading means selling or buying the stocks right that is one attribute and that each each of the uh, uh, attributes in the stock market have got their own corresponding weight and uh, the other weight uh, for a uh, stock market is if there is any uh, merger that's happening around a particular uh, uh, symbol or the particular uh, company or the other uh, uh, attributes or the other factor is what are people saying on uh, especially just on the social media what are people saying about the services and products that are being uh, provided uh, by that particular uh, uh, company which is uh, based on sentiment analysis of people or oh, and not only uh, that but also what are people what are the news what is uh, uh, is there any news about this particular company uh, is there any uh, legal issues uh, of uh, legal issues uh, associated to this particular company uh, in the uh, in the market so and is there any change in the organizational structure? Has the CEO of the company changed, right? Or one of the key players in the uh, company has got a certain issue, right? Uh, or said something bad. So everything contributes to the, so the stock market, right? Okay, particular. So all these are taken into account. More importantly, people's perception. Um, the, the, the 2008 market crash uh, was related to people's uh, just uh, um, people's perception, people's psych psych the psychological state contributed to that. So um, a market crash can happen be, be, uh, with this or that, and what, the machine learning models don't understand the things that they are not trained with. If a situation, a new situation happens uh, with uh, the machine, an existing machine learning does not know about, then a wrong, uh, the model gives you a wrong uh, answer to uh, the right question. By the time you understand that just the model was wrong, it, it, it would be too late to fix issues. So part of, part of the reason that I say, uh, for example, here in the process, um, here in this process, once a model is deployed, there could be a change in data. There could be a change in the environment. So your model may be right for a, uh, a, up until a certain point, but could be wrong. So when those kind of things happen, uh, a machine learning model cannot properly predict the, the market. So that's a gap. So that, because of that, models have to be retrained uh, uh, again and again. And in relation to the testing, uh, when training, I see people uh, having. In relation to, uh, uh, so here, when training uh, the model was training and testing. So this cover uh, ups question, the second question here, uh, I think. Uh, how can I bring this? Uh, oh, you can you can see your your uh, chat uh, window. I, I I don't want to share. 
uh, here. So, but when training the machine learning mode in post training in uh, testing accuracy, yes, training and daily the test, training and then testing accuracy. But the most important is the, the combined accuracy of the model. The combined. If the model performs so well during training and so weak during testing, don't use that model because the model is overfitting or uh, uh, or you know just uh, uh, learning more about the training data and just if it's not performing uh, well uh, uh, on the on the testing that's a good indication that it's not going to perform well on a new data because we will see we will see in uh, a practical scenario uh, when we use actual data so uh, is the in in the algorithm how the learn pattern is represented learn pattern in algorithms are represented uh, using uh, different different approach uh, different approach uh, so algorithms uh, are trained using either uh, well, we will see, we, we we can simply say using weight weight uh, so uh, how we interpret weight in algorithm it depends on the type of algorithm that we use uh, for uh, to train a particular model. Uh, weight, for example, in linear regression, uh, uh, weight could be uh, uh, interpreted as uh, the co Let me use a uh, white word here. Okay, so for example, for linear regression, the, the model could be uh, beta naught plus beta one x. So the weight uh, of a model means understanding what the, uh, the intersection point and what the slope is. Uh, so our ultimate objective is understanding, uh, calculating this. And this is how we will be uh, determining the, the, the pattern and how uh, uh, we determine the, how uh, the pattern is represented. Depending upon the different types of uh, model, uh, we would uh, see weight uh, represented in uh, different uh, uh, ways. And, Okay. Uh, okay. In multi-class classification problem, after we train our model, uh, we plot uh, a confusion matrix. Uh, from the confusion matrix, we calculate uh, an accuracy of the model. But is this accuracy result training result or test result? That's a testing result. In short, uh, I am confused. Please say it's. Uh, usually, like just the confusion, confusion matrix is based on a testing, a test data uh, for classification. Can you share us the slides, please? Yes, I will. Uh, a question: One of the problem uh, problems of model development using machine learning uh, is model overfitting. What are the strategies to solve or minimize this problem? Uh, to do that. Uh, fine tuning, fine tuning your model, and most most of the time, uh, including as much data as possible, uh, and uh, try to do uh, use a cross validation uh, technique. And the other question is, as you uh, mentioned at the very beginning of the discussion about the impact of machine learning, what are the positive and negative impacts of uh, machine learning? Second, both data mining and machine learning use the same models. What is the uh, difference between data mining and machine learning? Machine learning is, a, uh, just to start from the second question, machine learning is a su the superset. Machine learning is not only data mining. Data mining is somehow focused in a specific uh, area to pa identify pattern. Uh, and data mining, in most cases, is unsupervised machine learning approach. But machine learning uh, has the supervised approach uh, where you train uh, classification models, 
uh, in uh, uh, reinforcement learning where you train models that can be uh, used for uh, robots. So that's the answer. The other question is, uh, during dimensionality reduction, is there a risk of losing important uh, features that are representative of the data? If there is, how can we handle that? Yes, there is a possibility of um, uh, losing uh, important features, important feature, but the ultimate objective is not uh, uh, utilizing that data, but just to understand more about uh, the data. The, 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 the purpose of dimensionality reduction uh, is not to maintain the important features, but to distinguish between among the features which are the important, between features which are the important features, not within a feature. So uh, that should be uh, realized. And can you share? Okay, I do. Uh, so if deep learning uh, use uh, artificial uh, neural network what uh, what is what does nor, uh, normal machine learning uses so um, deep learning uses artificial neural network and uh, machine learning has got different uh, different approaches for example logistic regression um, doesn't use uh, so the linear linear model, uh, the linear regression uh, uses a mathematical representation, a probabilistic uh, calculations. Uh, like some some of the classification use naive bias probabilistic based uh, uh, approach. So that's how uh, some of the machine learning models are utilized. But in deep learning, you represent uh, learning uh, just like uh, humans learning uh, ability based on neurons, uh, which we will briefly touch as aid of uh, this course. And how do you um, evaluate the performance of a machine learning model and how, uh, what metrics are commonly used? We will discuss about this. Uh, we will discuss, uh, we have different metrics. I mentioned some of them, but uh, we have uh, dedicated uh, chapters, dedica dedicated sections for this. Uh, and. Um, how do we choose a machine learning model, a machine learning algorithm to predict an outcome? And how do we know which algorithms are appropriate? Excellent, very good question. I will show you a cheat sheet uh, of algorithms. Uh, what kind of algorithm that you should be using for what kind of problem? And I will show you uh, there is a mapping between problem to algorithm and mapping. Uh, uh, among the different types of algorithms that we can uh, use in different uh, machine learning frameworks. And the second question here is, uh, when will we use uh, principal component analysis uh, for feature uh, selection? We will see in, a, in, a, in, in an example. Uh, so uh, when, when we use uh, principal component analysis.